to Welcome back, WNST, Towson of Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. We're positively on Radio Row. We're in Los Angeles, California, and you know, I figured there'd be some celebrities and some people from TV and stuff, but I booked this one, and, and every year I've had tasted the NFL guest on. I've had Andrew Zimmern stop by. Uh, the founder, Wayne Kostrowski, up in Minnesota, has been a longtime friend of mine. Uh, it is a pleasure to welcome Tim Love onto the program. Last time I had you on, you were zooming from, like, your house and your kitchen, and there's books and stuff. This yeah. is <laughs> this is like physical, man, like handshake, elbows. How are you? I'm tremendous. How are you? All right. How many Super Bowls for you? Uh, this is my eighth Super Bowl. Well, I was at your Super Bowl when the ice came and all that. Yeah. You're in the Dallas-Fort Worth <laughs> area. I said, you're from Dallas. He's like, Fort Worth. And I'm That's like, right. What's the difference? Tell me oh, the difference man. between Dallas uh, and Fort Worth. You know, really, it's night and day, and, and uh, Fort Worth is really just not coming into its own, quite frankly. Uh, uh, not that we don't like Dallas. We do, but, you know, uh, we always say if you go to Dallas, pack a lunch. Well, you had the famous uh, uh, nightclub in, in Fort Worth, right? Famous nightclub. Yeah, didn't you have a bar? Isn't there, like, a bar? Oh, yeah, yeah, the White Elephant Saloon. There, okay, there you go. Which I is in 1883, the most famous TV show in the world right now. See, I mean, I knew I was going to get some Fort Worth love here <laughs> out of this. Barbecue, right? Barbecue, we do barbecue. I've got uh, eight restaurants in Fort Worth, and one of them happens to be a, a very solid barbecue joint called The Woodshed. What was the first thing, you, like conceptually, what did you think you were going to do when you were when you were young? <laughs> oh, when I was young, well, let's see, when I was real young, I thought I was going to be a professional soccer player. Oh, really? Yeah, and I played uh, all over the world when I was young, and then... Uh, now, hold on, so when you were young, what, what turned you on about that? Because, like... Uh, Indoor soccer? Did you see Tattoo play for the side? I did see Tattoo play, 100%. All right, yeah. so indoor soccer. I also saw uh, uh, Pele play at the Dallas, the old Dallas Tornadoes when I was real young. And then, uh, but, the you know, I just, I, I don't know why I fell in love with soccer growing up in a football world, without a doubt. I played football as well, uh, but uh, soccer was just my thing, and I ended up being the kicker, obviously, uh, well, later there you in go. life. Um, it worked out okay for Justin Tucker, another kid yeah, in Texas. Yeah, I, I should have stuck with it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas seems to get a new kicker every year, so maybe I should have done that. But no, It's uh, fascinating you say that because we Baltimore has an incredible Dallas connection with a man named Kenny Cooper. Are you familiar with Kenny Cooper? Uh, Kenny Cooper Jr. was a, a U.S. soccer star. Oh, yeah. Kenny, Kenny played for that Dallas team as a keeper in the NASL yeah. and then became sort of this legendary, larger-than-life figure in the 80s in Baltimore promoting indoor he was we were trying to beat guy. tattoo yeah, that's right we're trying to beat ron newman in the san diego tattoo, like and that you know it's crazy how great how big it got and then it just kind of fell off and it's too bad well in 1984 85 86 cbs was going to come in and turn it into a television product yeah. and it just it didn't and and they were the first sport now the nba's got lights and serious and music yeah, for 30 yeah. years they were the first ones that played rock and roll the the players came running like a wrestling match through like dry ice with hand uh, roses <laughs> kenny right. cooper would wear an american flag and he had a british accent but when i was in dallas i had kenny on last year kenny's just a dear just a love he's a beloved figure in baltimore but all of his roots are in dallas and in dallas soccer and his boy was um, on the united states team kind of yeah. for a while and was so that's soccer at the old, in dallas. At the old reunion arena oh yeah. see yeah, I saw I saw the stars play there, and I saw a Journey concert there. Once. Yeah, I, at me as well. So barbecue for you? I mean, I think of you, I think barbecue because I guess I think Texas and barbecue yeah. and you and whatever. But was that like a first thing that you did? I guess that's what I was asking. Like when it came to food, some people are pastry chefs, some people are oh, yeah. sous chefs, some people just want to make pizza, <laughs> some people just want to serve beer and have a bar, and it turns that's out exactly that they can right. cook food. Right? Yeah, and for me, uh, you know, my first restaurant's called Lonesome Dove, uh, and it's a uh, very um, Fine dining, wild game, game fish, uh, with 50 seats. Uh, that restaurant has built my entire career. That one restaurant has paid for every other restaurant that I've opened, and uh, I've been fortunate. I don't have any partners. Well, that's a unique space, wife. right? Yeah. I mean, when you're, uh, where else would I go? You, what, you just said wild game fish, seafood. Wild game, wild game, and game fish, right? Game so fish. The wild caught fish, uh, and uh, things like you know venison, kangaroo, rabbit, rattlesnake, duck. Um, Striped bass, catfish. Alligator. Alligator. All right. There you go. Well, you know. If it's got four legs, I pretty much make something out well, of it. Well, absolutely. <laughs> well, you, you know, in, in that vein and people stepping out and trying new things, I was in Koreatown last night. I was in Little Tokyo. I didn't really discover Asian food till I was 
35. I mean, I had Chinese food or whatever that you would say there's some rice and there's some broccoli yeah, and there's yeah, some but chicken. Not, not some deep ethnic food. Yeah, I mean, and I've traveled in Asia now and I've, I've traveled all over the world, but I, I, I love food and I, I do like trying new things. So when you say rattlesnake or something like that, the first thing is turn my nose up <laughs> yeah. and the second thing is... Well, this dude knows what he's doing. He's well, then, been selling then it. I want to try it. Sets in, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, I've never tried that kind of cheese. Or yeah. I, we. So Wise Market sponsors us, and I, I usually have my Wise cup here, and I'll hold yeah. it up and all that. And um, they have an ice cream called Tea Berry, and we always talk about foods and different things we've never tasted. Tea Berry ice cream. I'm like, what the hell is that? You know, <laughs> like it, it, it's birch beer ice cream, but it looks like Pepto Bismol, and. You might not want to try it, but if you like birch that, beer, you'd fall into it. That chalky pink look to it. Right. Yeah. So I, what, for, for what you serve and the uniqueness, there's a, I've had venison, right? I mean, a lot of yeah. people shoot deer or whatever. For, for your place, what, what would you put me into? What's a, what's a starter car for a, a restaurant? Uh, well, we, do, we, we make an incredible sausage out of rabbit and rattlesnake, which is really, really great. So that's a starter. That's a starter, yeah. Okay, and all we, right. do these, uh, we do a kangaroo carpaccio nacho. It's also really great. Uh, one of my best friends got married in uh, Australia, and I was fortunate enough to go to this kangaroo f- farm. If oh, you will. I, I've been and, Australia, yeah, sure. And they, uh, and this guy pulls out a kangaroo loin, and he's got the super hot grill, and he rolls it across the grill with a lot of seasoning on it, and he slices a piece off, and I'm like, oh my God, it's one of the greatest meats I've ever tasted. And I never had kangaroo at that point in my life. That was 22 years ago. And uh, I, was, I was like, I got to make a dish out of this. And so came back to Fort Worth, and took the kangaroo loins and seared them very lightly with this uh, like chili rub I put on it on top of a blue corn tortilla with a little bit of boars and cheese some lingonberry habanero demi glace and a little piece of avocado. He said lingonberry. I like that. Yeah. I like lingonberries. A little yeah. tart. I like that. That's nice. Yeah, it's a really nice dish. Well, I tell you what, Tim Love's here. Uh, he's here on behalf of Taste of the NFL, uh, and it's presented by Frito Lay and Pepsi. I got to say all these things. I'm, I'm reading and reading and reading. Tell, tell me what you're doing, because Andrew Zimmer stopped by. I, I've been to Taste many times, so I could talk about being there with Nancy Longo and serving crab dishes and corn dishes right. and putting the hat on. And um, and I've done this in it's been 28 years of Super Bowls. I've probably been the 22 Taste of the NFLs, and I, I know the cause is hunger uh, for many, many years. But I know things have changed the last couple of years, and you're involved in this. So I want to give you a chance to talk about LA because I'm feeling like there's going to be music, there's going to be celebrities, yeah, and there's probably going to be like great, great, great food. Most likely going to be great, great food. That's right. The culinary joyride that is the Taste of the NFL is coming up, and and you mentioned Andrew Zimmer is a great friend of mine, I've known Andrew for a long time, but the last couple of years he and I really kind of create this fun little battle back and forth if you will of uh cooking on stage and we you can also do taste the nfl at home we're broadcasting it's going to be the first hour or the last hour before the super bowl on nfl network uh no offense to you my wife loves carla hall my wife why loves it, that, why does that be offensive no, no, no I mean, she, that's the, if, if she would say i gotta meet carla i gotta meet carla yeah. you know but she's already met Andrew, well, who so. don't want to meet carla she's she, funny as hell as you would say like yeah. it's like she's really a fun lady and and I love her soulful cooking. And yeah, I want to invite her over to my kitchen. That's like, right. You know, yeah. you want her in your kitchen. Yeah, 100%. I've done, uh, she and I have done some fun uh, cook off deals. And, I, you know, you get the three of us together. Ming Sai's it's here. My wife loves Ming, Ming Sai. Too. Ming Sai, you know, Ming Sai, the womanizer. You got to watch out for him. If, if your wife likes Ming Sai, you got to watch out. Well, she's got his book. Uh- <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I know I, I know the cookbooks my wife yeah. has. Tim Love is here yep. on behalf of Taste NFL, so so everybody can participate. So it is it is it's open. It's online. Well, it, yeah, it's online, and you can come. Uh, we have an event uh, on Saturday from noon to four, uh, which is uh, similar to the Taste of the NFLs you've been to before, but amped up a little bit more. So we're doing a, a whole uh, cooking demonstration on stage. We have live music. Oh, this is daytime. And it's also a taste around. That's right, daytime on Saturday. Oh. And then we have another event that is an hour before the Super Bowl. That's on NFL Network, but. The, what I say to everybody about the Taste of the NFL is, while some people said, man, that seems expensive, it's $1,000. I'm like, well, not really, because the ticket to the Super Bowl is like $20,000. Right. So you can come to the Taste of the NFL and see more players, eat better food, have better music. And still watch And the have game. a lot more fun. And still watch the game, right, for 1000 And 20000 you sit in a seat with a mask on, and you're like, what the heck's going on? Now, you told me you've been to the last eight Super Bowls. I've been to 20 five of the last 28 and broadcast from 28 yeah. games. So I'm I'm never in front of my TV. I'm never in a basement at a party. I'm never with chips here and shrimp Dips cocktail. there, yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, but I know that that's the way other people experience it, and I'm blessed. I'm, I experience it in the upper deck, watching the game, taking selfies, eating good food in the parking lot, looking yeah. for the black crows before the game or whatever. <laughs> um, 
for you, what, take me back 10 or 15 years in a Super Bowl. You're a football fan. You're from Dallas. It's uh, not, not a Dallas Super Bowl or anything. Just a Super Bowl 20 years ago. If you were to throw a party, what's what's on your Super Bowl menu if you're having people so, over? So, yeah, if I'm having people over, like, that's a great question. I'm going to keep the grill on all day. So what I like to do when I have friends over for any football game, but especially for something like the Super Bowl, it's just a constant revolution of different foods, some bacon-wrapped scallops, some grilled lamb chops, some chicken wings, some burgers, uh, little uh, pieces of steak. This sounds like kebabs. the Korean joint I was in the other that's day. I had a grill. Right, right. And just keep it little going. This, a little this, a little yeah. frog legs they had on that's there. Right. They had some things going Because when you, you know, the best thing about Super Bowl is, is a lot of times, like you say, the food, what people bring over. So it... If you can keep the grill going all day, it just kind of keeps entertainment flowing and stuff like that, especially a couple hours before the game. People come over a little bit early. You make a big set of cocktails. Like I would make a big set of Palomas this year and then make some tacos and have a nice um, queso for people to I'll dip and all that stuff. House, see? And then you just have some grilled Cowboys you, you are never going to the Super Bowl anyway. You Here we go available. again. I, I've, had, I've had to hear this all day. You know, when I get back, I'm going to talk to Steve and Jerry like, listen, I'm not here defending the Cowboys the whole Super Bowl. I mean, like, we got to get ourselves together. It's there. easy to dislike the Cowboys. It really is. <laughs> I mean, it's a, you, you know, it makes it uh, – how do you feel about this thing here? I mean, this, is, this has been a wild scene, right, Los yeah, Angeles? And it is. I haven't I, been over to the stadium yet, so I'll, I'll be there on game day. I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting there early and seeing, seeing the SoFi. The yeah. Correct. I haven't been to SoFi Stadium yet, so I'm really excited to see it. Yeah, I mean, it looks incredible on TV, and that seems incredible from the air, but it would be nice to walk in the middle of it, um, you know, being from Dallas, uh, you know, going into Jerry World, I have to say I've been to a lot of new stadiums, and it's hard to match. Uh, well, it's just so Cowboy big. Cowboy Stadium. It's, it's just big. It's just massive, and it's just so nice. I mean, it's so nice inside. I mean, I've just – I went to opening game at, at uh, the Raiders against Baltimore. Okay. That was a heck of a game on that Monday night game. And we lost. I yeah, know, I remember. But, but, I mean – John Harbaugh didn't like it. <laughs> it, was a, it was a nuts game, though. It really was. It really was. It was 110 degrees outside and, like, 55. It, it, it was the weirdest thing. And, and I that, walk in that, that stadium. goofy torch, that, that torch. I don't understand the, the it. The Raiders thing. I mean, it's like, yeah. I, but I, you, the outside of the stadium looks incredible. You walk in, though, and it, it just doesn't compare to all the new stadiums. So I'm anxious to see – SoFi Stadium. Well, I loved Minnesota. Uh, and I, I thought Minnesota did a nice job. Yeah. They had that glass, and uh, architecturally, it's beautiful. Super cold. It was really that cold. That might be the coldest Super Bowl in history. Poor Eagles fans. <laughs> you know, I was partying with them. I, got, I, I left the party at 4 a.m., went straight to the airport. It was a long, long night with Jimmy Schwartz and the boy Joe Douglas. Uh, Tim, uh, Tim Love's here. Uh, Carla Hall, Andrew Zimmern, uh, Lashita Perry, Mark, uh, is, pronounce that. I don't, I, I don't uh, want to get it wrong. Yeah, sure. I, yeah. I, I get it wrong. And Ming Tsai, I can say Ming Tsai, but I, yeah, I, I can't uh, say that. Uh, the event is Saturday. Uh, you can tune in and Super Bowl Sunday as well. Taste of the NFL at home and NFL Network. You guys are going to be on NFL Network as well. So, um, all right. Well, we've talked a lot of food. I, I just want to say one thing. I, I changed my brand a couple years ago to Baltimore Positive. We now use a crab, a Maryland crab as part of our logo. Okay. And Zimmer and I got into this two years ago, because I wasn't here last year, about what makes a crab cake. And he had one recipe, simple, this, that, boom, boom. That's the yeah. only way to do a crab cake. I did 30 crab cakes in 30 days in the month of August in the state of Maryland. Ah. I went from Eastern Shore well, I hear to the about mountains. This. Well, I mean, it's on video. You can see my little vignettes <laughs> imitating guys like you and Guy Fieri and whatever. Um, and, and I met people. And, you know, a, a, it was an open conversation about red and blue and right and left and yeah. the eastern shore and the western shore and the city and the county and the farm. But um, everybody makes crab cakes differently. And every restaurant would say, I got a great crab cake. In the same way, a lot of restaurants say, I got a great burger. And yeah. the way they do it or whatever they think they, they're doing to it. But crab is one of those things everyone makes it differently. A everyone. 100%. And then the quality of the meat, the freshness of the meat, where it comes from. So I've really been... Uh, getting into food, and uh, it's been fun. As you should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen skinny. People keep, keep saying you spit it out. I don't food, spit it out The thing about food is, you know, it never ends. The education never ends. The fun never ends. The people never end. The stories never end. It's it's unlike anything else in the world. You know, as my, my good friend Jose Andre says, you know, don't build walls, build bigger tables. And the more tables you can build, the more fun you're going to have in your life, without a doubt. I mean, I'm writing a book right now on the drink screwdriver. Okay. It's two ingredients, right? Right. Everybody knows what a screwdriver is. It's orange juice and vodka. You go get a screwdriver anywhere in the world, it's different. It's the craziest thing. So it's a, the craziest experiment I've ever had in food because you think with 
Just two, and everybody knows what the two ingredients are. Yeah, here's it's how to make a cake. It's juice. this and this and this, and that's how we make a cake. And, and but you have 10 people making it. there's no argument that what, what a screwdriver is. Right. It's vodka and orange juice. Yet, every single one you get is different. What percentage? I mean, it's the craziest thing. How much pulp? Yeah, how much? Well, like, <laughs> is it fresh orange juice? Not fresh orange juice. Does it come out of a can? What kind of ice do you use? How tall is the glass? How small is the glass? Do you squeeze the oranges, or do you put them on that electric juicer? Do you, like... It changes the whole dynamic. What brand of liquor? Yeah, it's the craziest thing. Uh, I mean, and that's that's what you'll learn I mean, if you you break something down to that. What 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 else has just two ingredients? I mean, think about the this ice pizza. Water. Let's have it. pizza. What right. does pizza mean to you? My God, yeah, it's, it's monstrous. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's monstrous. Well, and, and I felt that way about crab cakes that I could go the rest of my career, and this is my thirty first year doing this, having a, a different place to have a crab cake every week, and never having the same experience twice. And crab balls, uh, broiled, fried. Yeah. Uh, you know what slurries it's like are you Bubba using? Gumps. <laughs> yeah, like, Toad, a Bubba I mean, Gump has a crab I cake. Just, <laughs> I haven't had it yet. I'm going to go down to Harbor and try it. Uh, Tim Love is here on behalf of the Taste of the NFL. Come have a crab cake with me one day, yeah, man. Yeah. My dear friend Julio Bermejo is going to be over here later. He owns Tommy's Mexican Restaurant up in, uh, he knows Ming and, and, and is very involved in the liquor uh, industry and, and tequila industry. So uh, I'm going to put you guys together and have some fun. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, because we were out eating last night. It, it is... I have cultured friends who've never had Bing Su. And the only reason I've had Bing Su is because of a visit like this. Zimmern came by like five years ago. I barely know who he is because I don't eat Weird foods, not, yeah, I mean, yeah. not your food, but I'm not eating octopus eye, you know what I mean? Like, I don't need that, but I'll eat any calamari you put in front of me, right? right. But we got to talking, and um, not just, it was before the crab cake conversation, and I saw him on TV eating this Korean shave ice at Grace Kitchen in New York City, two blocks from Madison Square Garden, a place I'm, I'm there all the time. Like, you walk by it every day. And I saw it, and I'm like... I got to go get that next time I'm in New York, and I did, and it's sort of been life-altering. It's made me go to Korea. I wanted to tell Andrew <laughs> this. He's not here. I've gone to Korea, but I was in Koreatown twice this week, and I took friends last night to this wonderful place, and they're like, this is so light. I've never had anything like it in my life, and I'm like, perfect. If every day you try one new thing. That's right. You know, and it's a real turn-on when you, you get a palate. Well, that's you, right. you find something, you're like, I would never would have tried this. And Kangaroo. But, yeah, but, and yeah, yeah that's right. You only have, all you need is one person that you – have respect for or you had a good time with or somebody that made you smile and they say you should try this and you go what the hell i'll try it and next thing you know it changes your whole perspective on a lot of things not just that one thing i remember being with julio at a rolling stones concert in rio de janeiro 15 years ago and we, you couldn't get out of there because it was like two million people and there's water so you're sort of trapped we we went down to the market it was a beautiful market like reds and greens and blues it was one o'clock in the morning. It was it was upscale. It was yeah. not, it was very nice for Rio. We we went in. He said, "Pick up anything you've never seen in your life and put it in the bag." So we went through the produce, and I'm like, "I don't know what the hell this is." Yeah. Put it in the bag, you know. And we we went back to the room. We we had had a, a few several yeah. several <laughs> walking talking. We got back to the room, and you know he st took out a knife, just started cutting stuff up and throwing a plate. I'm like. Tastes like a mango. Yeah, it tastes like a persimmon. Tastes, yeah. you know, and you just start tasting things because when you're walking through a market somewhere else in the world, you're just going to see stuff you've never had. Oh man, when you walk through an Asian market, it's crazy. That's when it goes crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're like I don't. I'm a. You're a little afraid of it. You're a little like Google it. I, does it taste like cinnamon? What does it taste like? You know. <laughs> uh, how are you? Is there anything in the world you still haven't tasted? I mean, do you, oh, yeah. you still experience things at an event like this. You'll somebody, some chef will come up and you'll say, "What is that?" Well, you know. Uh, yes, there's, there's always that opportunity, I feel like, in food. And you think you – I say this all the time. If you think you've invented something in food, you're, you're grossly mistaken. I mean, it's already been done. It's been somewhere in the world. You didn't invent it, okay? Nobody did. We all live off each other. We all learn from each other. We all create things because somebody else created something else. And once you get that in your mindset in the food world is where you really start learning about more and more about food. And I say that all the time. So while things may look new to us – it's already happened. I mean, you're not creating new things in the food world. I remember when sushi and tacos came to Baltimore. That's right. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Back in the 80s, you yeah. know. Nobody ever heard of a taco in Baltimore in Which is nuts, right? Like Taco Bell was the first place I ever saw a taco in my life. Like, yeah. literally. And so, you, you know, it's like Tex-Mex. I mean, even, even in New York, which I feel like has some of the best food in the world, without a doubt, it's still tough to find Really good, genuine Tex-Mex. I could get York, you some right? Shanghai dumplings to blow your That's mind. That's exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. 
<laughs> Tim Love is here. <laughs> hey, well, crab cake. Do you, do you like? Uh, have you had Maryland crab cakes in any frequency oh, yeah. or been to Maryland? Or uh, what's the best one you've uh, from a flavor profile? What What would be a, if I said to you right now, if you and I were doing a chop challenge, right? You and uh -huh. me, right? Do, you go. To, you're gonna make a crab cake, and I'm gonna make my crab cake. What would your crab cake be? Uh, well, I would use, I would use blue crab. Okay. Um, because that's what I grew up on. Right blue on. crabs in Texas. I'd use blue crabs with sweet red pepper, celery, a little bit of uh, red onion, and I'd put jalapeno, mayonnaise, and then I'd grind up my own breadcrumbs and sear them. Now, see, in Maryland, uh, just I'd be really honest with you, just what you said to me. No one's ever put that. No one would ever think of putting that on a plate because it doesn't have Old Bay. It's not a traditional Bay, Maryland, right. like, you know, thing. Well, not every place has Old Bay. I was shocked to see every place I ordered a legitimate restaurant crab cake. Now, and I didn't, like, go to Gucci upscale places, but I did go to a few. Yeah. But you don't need that with a crab cake. And I definitely went to shack places that serve crabs, and crab cake was more of a fried afterthought. Like a yeah, little yeah. fried hockey, not a, not a back fin jumbo. I got you, yeah. And I like it just as well, but... I, I would say for, for every meal, they served me tartar sauce. And where I came from, I, I was astonished by this because I've been, I'm 53 years old. I've been eating crab cake from yeah. Baltimore. I, I've never thought it. Tartar sauce is for a fish stick. Like, I just would yeah, never. Yeah, I know what you're saying. And every, and every place I've went, I, I looked in the restaurant, the little cap stays on it, and it gets thrown away. And I, I said to all the restaurateurs, by the time I got to day 10, <laughs> and I'm throwing it away for the 10th day, and I'm doing shtick on radio, I'm like, does anybody eat it? Ask your servers how yeah, yeah. often what happens? when it comes back to the kitchen, you're just throwing it away, right? I, but I guess people in the Eastern Shore eat it. I mean, literally, like it's an older thing, but I've never heard of such a thing. To kill a crab cake with tartar sauce. Tartar sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Out I of mean, a can. Maybe you know, a nice little light butter sauce or something like that. See? Now, but, but when you said red pepper, 99% of like the people that I do crab cakes with... <gasps> Heresy. But if you go into a Greek-owned place, they will absolutely have a pimento involved in it. I yeah. love that flavor. Pro, I love it. It sweetens it up. That's what, I yeah. love that flavor. Pro, but that's not. But different places, different folks, different strokes. Kangaroo, venison, and uh, a great, great party. Taste yeah. of the NFL. Tim Love's here. Uh, he's from uh, Fort Worth, not Dallas. Not Dallas. <laughs> not Dallas. Tell everybody Fort how Fort Worth, the 12th you. largest city in the country. Now, did you know that? If Jerry just would have built that? it over there instead of in Arlington. Right over there. I mean, I'm <laughs> you all got a new baseball stadium you don't need. It's crazy, man. Here we go. Oh, boy. I'll come have barbecue with you anytime if you come have a crab cake yeah. with me. Hey, I appreciate 100%. you, man. Appreciate I know you got places to go, people to see, and yep. meals to cook. Tim Love here on behalf of uh, Taste of the NFL. Everybody can check it out. It's going to be an NFL Network this weekend as well. I've been a big supporter for a long, long time uh, for Gen Youth and, and Student it. Hunger Fund uh, Feeding the Children. I'm Nestor. We are WNSD AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore. We're on Radio Row in Los Angeles talking food, making me hungry. Now I need a beer. <laughs>